Hi, I'm Andrew, and this is my 1995 E350 box truck, and his name is Toadstool. I definitely looked for a van with uh, open style doors. When I got it, it was just a empty shell. I just, yeah, started from absolute scratch. Uh, I built uh, these shelves out so I could put a uh, twin size bed and I built these uh, seats for storage, which they have um, quite a lot of storage under all of them. They really swallow a lot of the stuff that maybe you don't use often. The kitchen was really important to me. I really enjoy making food. And so, yeah, a large countertop space where I could really prep and, uh, and, and make a big meal was really important to me. As well, I also um, put an insert in this uh, really large sink because I wanted to be able to hide lots of dishes and uh, yeah, it has uh, uh, running water with just activated by the switch. This countertop uh, was, someone was giving away uh, one package that they had remaining of maple, I believe, maple flooring. Um, and so yeah, I just ripped it down into uh, strips and then yeah, just glued it all up as a butcher block. And then yeah, even there was little lots of like gaps and stuff, so I actually, through a coat of the blue paint that's on the walls and then sanded it all flush just to give it, I don't know, a little bit of a, an exciting look or whatnot. <laughs> like this is kind of the kitchen where I would keep pots and pans and uh, uh, a lot of the dried goods are taken out, but yeah, it has a lot of other uh, food type um, stuff in there. <laughs> I'm a handyman, so I always have a, a pretty large tool drawer that's uh, never organized. <laughs> Everyone needs something like that, a drawer that they can just throw something in for a small space. Uh, yeah, this was just uh, another, I think, $20 buy off of um, Craigslist that I just sanded down and painted black and uh, yeah, just installed it right in the countertop as well. In terms of uh, the cooling situation for um, food, uh, it's just like a very simple 12 volt um, chest style cooler um, and it's just uh, hooked directly into the electrical system. So the electrical system uh, is a 300 watt solar panel system fed into a 30 amp uh, MPPT uh, charge controller uh, that charges uh, two Trojan T105 um, 6 volt um, deep cell batteries uh, and so it has about 220 amp hours um, that was kind of important to me too because I wanted to like run a blender or have the lights on all night and not really have to worry too much uh, about draining the batteries. Uh, the inverter I actually took out uh, but it was a, um, a 1500 uh, watt inverter that uh, just I simply just had it plugged in here and it just sat here. Yeah insulation um, was just, uh, I believe it's uh, two inch rigid foam insulation that I just cut into battens and uh, there's essentially ribbing in this whole um, uh, box that keeps it together that then uh, putting the insulation in between, um, you can see like with these screws, these are the ribs here and then yeah, insulation was just put in between them. And same with the, the, the ceiling as well. So the skylights were really uh, a decision to try and keep the van as stealth as possible. I would have loved to cut windows in the sides, but honestly, the skylights bring so much light in and I'm so happy that I did it. It's not for the faint of heart cutting a two by four foot hole, uh, actually two of them in your roof. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, I did my research and sealed them really prop, uh, really well, uh, as well as uh, a ventilation fan. Um, yeah, for either uh, keeping it cool or, or warm. The heating system is uh, just a relatively simple um, blue flame propane heater. Uh, and essentially what it does is it has a small flame that heats up a uh, ceramic tile and then it radiates out into the space. Um, and so, I mean, the problem with any small space burning propane is that it creates uh, moisture and um, so I, I wanted to try and find something that was uh, almost the most efficient. And from what I found, Blue Flame is a relatively good technology for um, reducing uh, yeah, moisture. The uh, idea with these couches was that, uh, yes, I would have a table uh, that would sit here. I never got around to uh, building it. Uh, the idea was that the table would disconnect and hang on the wall and maybe on the bottom there would be a piece of artwork or something so it look uh, just blend seamlessly in um, but uh, I have had a few people stay over in the van and all we did was uh, take the cushions out and just lay them along the floor I mean there's plenty of space and so these are actually um, mattresses that I did the foam mattresses that I cut up and uh, they are also I think a twin or queen so it's uh, a nice space for someone to stay as well. Another thing that was really important to me was to be able to have access to the cab um, as uh, either just in the event that I needed to jump in the driver's seat and go uh, or just yeah for the fact of being stealth if you pull up somewhere and you get out of your truck and you throw the doors open and hop in it's gonna be a little obvious so um, yeah, being able to sneak back here and then just jump into bed or even just seal everything up and just quietly relax. I originally dreamed up this idea that I would love to live on a small property on the Gulf Islands. And uh, this is sort of the product of that idea is that I wanted a space that would feel comfortable that uh, I truly feel that I, I could live in for an extended period of time. Um, and I, I always love tiny spaces and tiny homes and so the problem with them is that they uh, have a real issue of once you build them where do you put them they don't really meet um, bylaws and regulations uh, and so yeah I thought why not just throw one in the back of a moving truck and then it's movable and you know it's still legal if you even want to park it on the street um, and so yeah, this is sort of what finally came to be, I guess. So the reason why I'm not currently living in it is uh, because uh, not only did uh, the deal of uh, the property that I was looking at fall through, uh, but as well I realized that I really needed to be close with my parents as they're getting older. Um, and so I decided to go a, a different route and I'm currently designing a, uh, a small garden suite um, that will be on a foundation. I built this van uh, about two years ago uh, and the original idea was uh, to road trip it down to Burning Man and uh, so uh, it, I guess that was sort of the maiden voyage if you will um, and after that uh, just realizing how much I enjoyed being on the road in this truck and the the, the comforts that it gave me, um, yeah, it just essentially became my uh, adventure vehicle. So I've taken it um, down the west coast and all over Vancouver Island. And just for the ability to pull up somewhere and open the back doors and be in your living room or your kitchen with waterfront property and uh, yeah, everything that you need, it's its a pretty incredible feeling. Stealth was really important to me. Um, I think just for the fact that um, I knew that I would be traveling in this van. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like to put people off or make them feel uncomfortable. And so just to stay out of people's way and I mean, I'm not, if I'm not, yeah, being a, 
obtrusive to them, then hopefully they'll leave me alone as well. Some of my advice would be, and I think I've heard it a lot, is to do it. Um, there's so much information out there on the internet of DIYs and um, it's it's really not that unattainable and it's not that expensive either. Um, it's, it's definitely, regardless if you want to do a small van or if you want to do a larger build like this, it's, um, it, it's really not that difficult. It, sound, it sounds like a surma uh, unsurmountable um, thing that y you couldn't achieve, but in reality, uh, the simple list and some YouTube videos and yeah, you got it. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Um, as far as to who I would recommend it to, um, I mean, anyone who uh, feels like there's another way, essentially, because um, it's so easy to follow what society is telling us to do of, you know, um, yeah, work and pay your mortgage and be a good little robot, uh, when in reality, something like this, um, to me anyway, signifies freedom or self-sufficiency of being able to have something that you don't owe anyone um, and not throwing rent down the drain or um, wishing for happiness on the horizon. Like if, if you want to try and build a life that, um, that you wake up every day and you're excited to do it. Some of the challenges of the builds uh, is I mean, I mean there's there's challenges around every corner uh, and so it's just being able to deal with it one of the challenges for sure was the the paneling on the side it was really important to me at the time to do something that i hadn't really seen before in a van um and uh, i definitely really uh, enjoy the look of it but the the time that went into it was quite excruciating to say the least. I personally worried when I parked if someone was going to hassle me and I don't know why I had that fear because it literally never happened. Uh, one time I got hassled and it was in a Walmart parking lot that apparently you weren't allowed to sleep in overnight and that was it. They just asked me to leave. There was no drama. It was, it was not a big deal. I made a conscious decision not to have a bathroom in this truck um, and that's just the simple fact that toilets are everywhere. Um, it sounds crazy, like if you've if you're so used to having a washroom in your home. Um, but yeah, the reality is is there's always a bathroom around. I have a gym membership, and so you can go to the gym and shower. Um, but on the off chance that I needed anything, the reason why I installed a large sink was you can also take a kind of a, a light shower, if you will, a kind of rinse your hair under the faucet and, uh, you know, clean the armpits or something like that. Uh, definitely some benefits, um, like I said, is that um, it, it, it represents freedom in a way, like of being able to uh, not feel tied down to something. I mean, if you were a real tr tr nomad, you could pick up and leave if you really wanted to. It's a simpler lifestyle as well. We, we don't, like we're convinced that we need to complicate our life, but in reality it's it, it can be a lot simpler than you think for sure. What got me interested in the first place uh, to take on a project like this was my love of small spaces. Um, just, uh, and minimalism, it's just, uh, yeah, being able to, um, live comfortably in a small space has always fascinated me because the smaller space, I mean, the less you end up paying for it in your life and then that opens up the door to, um, yeah, so many more options for you that rather than being tethered to some mortgage that you're going to pay for the rest of your life. I would say I try and live my life by trying to simplify and also not be afraid of failing. I think that's the biggest thing that keeps anyone from doing anything. Um, I can honestly say I have failed a bunch and I have made a bunch of mistakes, um, but I wouldn't trade that because in failure you learn and when you learn then you progress and yeah, you, 
it's you just keep going it it's yeah you just need to learn to dust yourself off that's it <laughs> if you're truly interested in a small space to to really just get out there and do it do your research and be diligent and and really come up with a plan but but don't be afraid to do it because even for an example like me where I absolutely love this space but um, truly like living a nomadic lifestyle isn't quite for me I like I want to be a little bit more rooted but again that's the learning experience of, of figuring out what you truly need in life and and then you can actually start to make that a reality. And where can people find you if they want to follow your journey? I guess Instagram, but I don't even know what my Instagram <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, this is how much I truly use it. Yeah, if you want to um, see some of the pictures of the build, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at arstrauss1.